Hi guys, and welcome again to HSC Chemistry and the Industrial Chemistry Unit. In this particular video, we're going to focus in on extracting sulfur, and specifically, we're going to have a look at the FRASH process. In the last video, we looked a little bit at some of the uses of sulfuric acid and why it's an important industrial chemical. And in this video, we're going to start to look at how that sequence of steps in, is involved in the production of sulfuric acid. And the first and the very most important of those steps is to actually um, collect sulfur. So you can see some of the steps involved in the manufacture of sulfuric acid with this um, little flow diagram. Now these arrows are not specifically meant to represent chemical reactions in the same way that we have used them in the past, simply um, a sequence. So we start with elemental sulfur, that's the first thing that we, we need um, to collect and, and we're going to look at the extraction of that in this video. Um, then that sulfur needs to be oxidized to form sulfur dioxide and then further oxidized to sulfur trioxide and finally our, our last product, H2SO4, um, is the sulfuric acid. Now one of the important things um, with sulfuric acid is that between these two steps, we often have an intermediate um, called oleum, and I'll deal with this a little bit later, but it's important to understand just a bit of an overview of where we're going with this. The first of these steps involves the extraction of sulfur from mineral deposits. We've talked about the fact that sulfur does collect around the mouth of volcanoes, for example, but it can also form deposits within the Earth's crust. And when that happens, we find those deposits, we need to extract them. So most of the sulfur that we find uh, on the surface of the Earth, or, or at least within the crust, uh, exists in a compound, either as a sulfide or as a sulfate. And these particular compounds are very important, but they're um, locked up, but the sulfur is locked up in combination with either um, ions, so say um, iron sulfide, or as um, one of the sulfates, so copper sulfate, to pick an easy one there. Um, this is often where you find the sources of sulfur. So in order to get the sulfur out, you need to refine those particular um, compounds to uh, break them down, decompose them, in order to release the sulfur. But another way of doing that is to actually find sulfur existing as the elemental form, um, which we can find in certain deposits in the USA, in Mexico, and in Poland. And where it occurs as actual deposits of sulfur, that's where we can actually extract it and um, use it in the process of sulfuric uh, acid production. In this process, what we need to do is we need to extract the sulfur using the FRASH process. And the FRASH process is one of these processes we expect you to be able to describe and also to evaluate. So here's a little example for you. So you can see what's happening is that we have this yellow layer here is the sulfur layer. So this is our elemental sulfur. It's sitting above a salt dome and it's trapped basically within these layers. So what we need to do is we need to extract that sulfur. Now we can sort of, I guess, open cut mine and try and open uh, a section of this land, but that's very destructive. It uh, causes land degradation, uh, land clearance, so any of the trees will be, need to be cut down. A lot of damage is done through open cut mining. So an alternative to that is to use this fresh process. The important thing here is that we have three tubes. Okay, we have a central tube, and then around that, we have two other tubes. Let me just draw them in different colors to see if that, that makes it sort of easier for you to see. And then a third tube going around the outside. All of these are sitting in the sulfur deposit, which I'll just make yellow here. Okay, so there's our sulfur deposit. So the first thing we do is we need to recognize that one of the important things about this is that sulfur melts at 113 degrees. Now that's only just above the boiling point of water. So if we boil water into steam at 100 degrees and then, then heat it up a little bit more, it'll stay as steam. But if we can have a high enough pressure, then we may be able to get that water, force those water molecules close enough together so that behave as a liquid. And when that happens, some interesting things can happen down in the um, sulfur layer here. So the first thing we do is we go 
from the outside um, and we find that the first thing we want to do is we want our steam to come down. So the steam, if go back to the orange, the steam is going to come down through the outside tube. This steam is at such a high temperature and pressure that what happens is it will actually melt the sulfur, melts sulfur. So the sulfur turns from sulfur solid to sulfur liquid. And that sulfur liquid can then mix with the water. So the steam is down here, it's, it's uh, under high pressure, so it may behave as a flowing uh, fluid, as a gas, uh, as a liquid, sorry. Um, as it is mixing, and we get sort of like a frothy um, emulsion forming here. So that's, that's what we get. We get sulfur combining with the water um, to form an emulsion. Now that happens while it's down sitting in the deposit. So what we need to do next is we need to blow some air through this in order to force the sulfur up through a third pipe. You can see what actually happens is if I stay with my, um, my blue pen here, the air under high pressure actually gets blown down through this central tube. And what that's going to do is, um, if we keep the green color, actually I might make it a yellow color. And so this is where the emulsion, the sulfur and water, emulsion is going to start rising through this second tube. So this is how the sulfur is going to come out of these tubes. So let me just be really clear about that air going in and in the other ones we have, um, I think I have those orange, so this is steam going in here. Steam going in first of all to melt the sulfur and then some air going through in order to basically under high pressure push that all out. It's like blowing um, into it with a straw. All those bubbles start to come. You can't, they can't come back up the tube they've been up. They can't come up the tubes where the steam's coming down. So there's third tube, third option for them. And that's where that um, combination of sulfur and water will rise back up. So some important things about the fresh process. Firstly, um, once the mixture reaches the surface, obviously no longer at 160 degrees, it's going to cool. So that means we're going to have liquid water combined with solid sulfur. So that's the mixture that we get when it rises back to the surface. So the sulfur is going to solidify. So the sulfur, which was a liquid, is now going to turn back into a solid. The sulfur can easily be separated from the water because it's insoluble. This is a very important property of sulfur and one of the reasons this is an important process is because it's insoluble, we can use something simple like filtration um, to remove it. It may well be that the sulfur is floating on the surface of the water, so just a froth flotation, something like that. Virtually um, think about it as if you were skimming leaves off the surface of a pool, you can get the sulfur away as easily as that. The low density of the sulfur is what enables it to be blasted to the surface using the compressed air and also one of the reasons why it often, um, at least a large portion of it, may even float on top of the uh, water. 50% of the sulfur used in the production of sulfuric acids is extracted using the fresh process. So that's why this is a very important process to have a look at because it is so critical to the first component of the production of sulfuric acid, which is obtaining sulfur. Thanks for watching.